Well, welcome to today's update. It's a late evening, Monday the 28th of March. Now, I want to look at the uh, progress of the, the BA2 variant of Omicron and also what's going on in the world generally. And we're going to focus particularly on the United States. Is there going to be a, a BA2 bounce in the United States? I still think that's likely. But uh, other sources are indicating that that is looking less likely, which is interesting. Now, let's just start with the, the BAT, BA2 situation. Now, this is from the World Health Organization's latest uh, report, weekly epidemiological update. So BA2 is now the main global driver. Now, we've really known this for some time, so it's good of the WHO to confirm it. But it's based on real data, so it's not, it's not to be ignored. And they're seeing that BA2 is now 86% of global reports. So 86% of cases in the whole world now are BA2 Omicron, as it's well and truly uh, become predominant. So 86% now. Uh, BA1 and BA11, which were previous uh, variants, uh, 13%. Now, we know that the BA2 is more infectious than the, the BA1. So lots of people ask me, why didn't the BA2 come straight away? Well, the answer is it wasn't there when the BA1 was there. So the BA1 came first and then the BA2 um, evolved after that. Is that. That's the way it looks. So the reason that the BA1 was more common for a long period of time is what we call founder effect. It was simply there first. That's, that seems to be why that has happened. Uh, but now it's down to 13% as it's being well and truly outcompeted. So BA2 is outcompeting BA1 and BA2 is outcompeting BA11 because it's so much more transmissible. The mode of evolution here does not appear to be immune escape. It appears to be increased transmissibility, which is, is good. We don't want immune escape, certainly in terms of severe disease, hospitalisation and death. So BA2 is more transmissible than BA1. The WHO is basically confirming what we've known for some time, but it, I'm not knocking it. It is good to confirm it. And it's not been shown to cause more serious illness, which is, it is quite a relief because there are quite a few uh, more mutations in the spike protein in BA2 compared to BA1, but it's not more pathogenic. I think we can, I think we can say that now. It's not causing more severe illness. Uh, Dr. Uh, Marie Van Kirkhoven, WHO, of course. Our vaccines remain incredibly effective at preventing severe disease and death, which is indeed fortunate. It's a good fortune rather than good management, but it's true. The data is still showing that, including, she says, against uh, both variants uh, of the sublineages of BA1 and BA2. So it's not good at preventing uh, infection. There's lots of symptomatic infections and lots of asymptomatic, asymptomatic infections, but it's not causing uh, more severe. Uh, the, the vaccines are still protecting against severe hospitalizations and deaths, which is good news. Now, I also get lots of questions about Delta Cron. So Delta uh, and Omicron together. Now, how does this occur? Well, what happens here is that if a person is infected with Delta and Omicron at the same time, the genetic material of those two uh, viral types can merge inside a single infected cell and become one type of virus with a mixture of Omicron and Delta genetic uh, material, and that's called Deltacron. Now, am I particularly worried about this? Well, we did look at this about three months ago and we decided we weren't particularly worried about it. But of course, the time when there will be lots of cases of this is when there was a lot of Delta and a lot of Omicron so that a person could be infected with the Omicron and the Delta at the same time. But of course, now Delta is virtually gone. So given that the, the Delta Cron is not forming at anything like the rate it used to because there's less Delta to go into the mix, I'm not really worried about it. I think it's going to carry on dying out. So a um, lot of talk about Delta Cron, but not particularly worried and remember, less will be being formed now because the uh, the Delta is simply not around. Now, let's look at some uh, some world statistics just to update. This is always useful. Uh, th these are the cases. Now, um, Canada and the United States definitely down, although we know the testing in Canada is poor. Denmark, the testing remains relatively good, 
but they're well and truly down from their um, Omicron wave. Now, this was their Omicron wave here. This is this is the this is it. It's very very high. So their wave went very high, but down very uh, very quickly. Um, moving up in terms of prevalence, we have the United Kingdom. Now, the United Kingdom prevalence is way higher than this. We are massively underreporting our testing. Uh, Netherlands coming down, Australia still going up, and New Zealand, I think you'd have to say, probably going down slightly. Uh, moving on to the R value, so there's the R of 1. So the United Kingdom here has got an R of about 1.3, 1.4. But of course, this is based on, on a very low level of test reporting, so it's actually way higher than this, way higher than this. It's incredible the number of cases in the in the UK at the moment. Really, really high. Everyone knows people that have... Everyone's either got it or, or knows people that have got it. Um, I, I, I've got I've got many, many uh, friends at the moment who have uh, COVID as we speak. Um, so um, actually really way, way higher than that. But that's the one line there. So United States, Netherlands, Denmark going down, New Zealand, Canada, Australia, United Kingdom going up. I'll just flick by there. That was the... Uh, we've got the... Um, no, we're not seeing the variance on that. Never mind. Number of patients in, in hospital per million. So hospitalisation data is accurate. Now, the United States way down, which is good news. Australia up slightly. But these are all per capita figures. So you can see that Australia, Canada, the Netherlands aren't too high, really. These are all are uh, based on cases per million. Denmark and the United Kingdom is going up a bit. But in terms of hospitalizations in the United Kingdom, about 60% of the cases uh, that are testing positive in hospital are admitted for some other reason. So 56, probably nearer 60% uh, are actually admissions with uh, Omicron, with COVID rather than from covid because the prevalence is just so high we saw exactly the same thing happening in denmark it's not really surprising that this is happening intensive care patients well here we see the here we see the breakdown canada netherlands united states united kingdom australia and denmark and cases of uh, intensive care admissions basically have been going down in most places throughout the Omicron wave because Omicron is not associated with the most severe conditions because Omicron is primarily upper respiratory mucosal compartment rather than lower respiratory. Fortunately, what have we got there? Uh, so that is a uh, new daily. No, that, that's having a bit of technical problem. So we'll, we'll leave that there. That that gives us a rough idea though of what's going on uh, generally. In the world now let's move on to the united states now um here we have the overall graphic for the states which is we can see that everything's going down cases deaths hospitalizations vaccinations all uh all going down so really quite good news from the states but we'll just uh, pad that out a, a little bit uh, now dr uh, walinski um cdc director of course or deputy is your interim director i can't remember um, she, um she, she's seeing saying that ba2 is now a third of new cases about 33 34 percent of new cases now i had thought it was much higher than this but this is the latest thing that she's saying so um i guess we have to go by that latest that the, the latest figures that she's giving us i thought it was higher but there we go now, uh, Paxlovid is being used in the States. Now, this Paxlovid, of course, is the Pfizer antiviral. And we are using this in the UK as well. And this is a good idea. This is reducing hospitalizations in the most vulnerable. Now, the trouble is with Paxlovid is that a lot of um, relatively healthy people are asking for it, um, who probably won't benefit from it that much. But whereas people that are older and with comor comorbidities will benefit from it quite significantly reducing their risk of hospitalization so it's really best to keep the the pax lovered that we have in both countries for those that are older and those that are more vulnerable to severe disease and of course the earlier after infection and diagnosis the pax lovered can be taken the better it's going to be um, so it is available and it does seem to be working which is good news now u.s cases let's just have a look at a closer up of that 
So here we, clear, we see clearly that they are going down really quite dramatically. They're, they're the US cases really dropping off really quite nicely there. So there's been a sharp Omicron wave. This is pretty well what we anticipated. The big question is now, is there going to be a slight increase in the states as a result of the BA2? And if so, how high will it go and how long will it last for? Um, I, I think there might be a bit of a BA2 uh, bounce based on what we've seen in the United Kingdom. Um, but uh, as we'll see in a minute, the official data, well, the, 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 the best predictive data is not really showing that. So the United States may well be basically out of this pandemic now. Uh, US deaths. Now, they're still high. That's the thousand a day line there. So they are going down and, and, and the, the projections are that these deaths will carry on going down. They've taken a while, but they are going down. Hospital patients, likewise, in the States also also going down really, really quite significantly and have been for some time. And again, that's predicted to continue. Now, we're just going to look at some of the predictive data on the United States from the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation, which Washington State uh, hosted, of course. And here we have that uh, here. Now, this is the first one, uh, daily infections uh, and testing. So we see that th these, these, the, uh, these are the actual daily infections up, up here. Where, where are we here? Here we are. Uh, so, so there are the numbers, 800,000 there at the peak. Now, this is predicted to carry on going. Uh, well, they predicted a tiny uptick there. Although we are, that's where we are today. So basically, they're predicting that that carries on going down. So that's um, that's interesting. And here we see the actual uh, daily infections and uh, daily infections. So th these are infections as opposed to cases. And we see they're much higher. So they peaked there. Of course, we're on a different scale here, so that they pink, that peak there at four million uh, per day. Uh, now uh, down here, and again, these are actual infections. Remember, and of course, the diagnosed cases are just a subset of these actual infections, predicted to carry on going down. So, interestingly, Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation is not anticipating a BA two uh, increase, which I must say surprise me I, I have been expecting it based on the uk data based on the danish data but but they're not so um i still suspect there is going to be somewhat of a bounce uh, an, an uptick but, but the, these are the people with all the data um, hospital resource use now this is looking pretty accurate because it is going down dramatically now um the, the, this this the, the green line here is icu beds this is all hospital beds, and we see that now it's down dramatically, and they are predicting a continued decrease uh, down to very, very low levels indeed by uh, July. Um, I mean, if, the, if these predictions are true, then the pandemic's basically over for the United States, which is just brilliant news. Daily deaths in the States that have been going down gradually. But again, they are predicted to carry on dropping. And of course, we know that Omicron is associated with uh, or the Omicron period of time, the combination of the Omicron and the amount of immunity around associated with lower levels of death. So again, predictions there are good. And the final one here from the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation is the um, this is the uh, the cumulative uh, deaths. Now, basically, um, the official deaths here aren't predicted to quite reach a million, um, but we, we know that um, they're going to increase or very gradually increase here. But we do know, of course, that the, the excess deaths in the States are already well over a million in the United States. So interesting, interesting data there. They are not predicting the uh the increases that the the i've been predicting so let, let let's hope uh, they're right and i'm wrong so this is from that was from the institute for health metrics and evaluation do do check on their website which of course all the data is uh all the data is readily available and very well researched data uh, also in the states a second booster for anyone 50 years and older from the FDA is coming soon. Now, it doesn't look like they're going to be pushing this. 
but it does look like a fourth dose will be available and the fourth dose will be four months after the third shot. Um, but g given the uh, dramatic, uh, dramatically good news that we see or, or the good predictions from the um, Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation really is that going to be necessary, especially as so many people are being exposed to Omicron. Um, anyway, it's going to be offered. Now, Shanghai, this is this is the bizarre story of uh, the bizarre story of China. So um, here we have um, the picture of King Canute demonstrating that he can't hold back the tide. And, and yet the Chinese authorities are still attempting to hold back the tide. They are still on an official zero COVID policy. I mean, I just this is, you know, for, for a nation of brilliant people, this is very hard to understand. Why, why are they trying to achieve the impossible? Now, what, one reason is or potentially is that they've got low levels of vaccination, particularly in older people. And I've got some good news on that in just a second. But let's just have a look at this. Shanghai, the financial center of China, of course. In fact, you could argue the financial center of the world these days. Certainly up there with uh, wherever the other ones are, New York, London, etc. Um, phased lockdown of 25 million people. Now, when the Chinese say lockdown, what they mean is locked down well and truly. These are quite uh, draconian measures by, by Western standards. It's an Omicron wave. We know it's Omicron. So Eastern side's under lockdown Monday till Friday, and that's undergoing mass testing. And then, and then the West side's going to be locked down after that. So there's mass testing. Now, so far with this mass testing, they've discovered 3,450 asymptomatic cases. 50 asymptomatic cases. So we see that the vast majority of cases that are being reported in Shanghai are detected by the mass testing in the midst of the mass draconian lockdown and they're managing to detect thousands, several thousand asymptomatic cases. Well, and, and only 50 symptomatic cases, 3,450 asymptomatic cases. And why would they want to detect asymptomatic cases given that only 50 were symptomatic? Well, obviously, it's to try and stop it spreading. But, you know, if, if three and a half thousand people are asymptomatic for them, so what? You know, th this really is hard to explain now. <clears throat> why, why are they carrying on with this um, with this draconian policy? Really? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, there's other citywide lockdowns in <clears throat> other parts of the uh, country as well. Now, I did find this paper here, <clears throat> vaccine effectiveness of two and three doses of uh, that's one of the uh, mRNA Pfizer type vaccines. And that's the Chinese Sinovac vaccine. So very different. These are the mRNA vaccines here. This is the mRNA messenger ribonucleic acid vaccines like the Pfizer and the Moderna. And th this is just the, 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 the coronavirus. Uh, the, the coronavac is the Sinovac, which is a... Um, a virus basically brewed up and then killed. Now it's it surprises me that the Sinovac is not more effective than it does seem to be, but there you go, that's the way the immune system's working at the moment. <coughs> now um three doses of either vaccine. That that's um whether it's the Sinovac or the, the mRNA type. Three doses of either vaccine according to this study offers very heavy, heavy, very high levels of protection against severe outcomes, 98.1%. So if, you've had th if you're in China and you've had three doses of the, uh, the, the, the Sinovac, well, three, well, I don't think many people have had three doses of the, of the BioNTech type vaccine, the mRNA vaccine. But if you've had, th like, like if you had two doses of Sinovac, then, then, then one dose of Pfizer, that would be absolutely fine. If you just had three straight doses of Sinovac, that would also be absolutely fine. Both are giving comparable levels of protection. It's the number of doses that are given that give the protection rather than the type of vaccine, at least between the uh, the Pfizer type vaccine and the, uh, the Sinovac type vaccine. So very high levels of protection. Very well worth having. 
so China does need to pay attention to vaccinating with a third dose their older, more vulnerable uh, people. And of course, they're well aware of this, but the uptake is still reasonably low, we believe. A third dose of either the, <coughs> either the, the Pfizer-type vaccine <coughs> or the um, Sinovac provides substantial additional protection against severe COVID-19 and should be prioritised, which makes perfect sense in the current situation in China because the vaccination rates are relatively low. And of course, in China, they have not had the spread of the natural virus like we've had in the Western countries because their lockdowns have been so effective. So they've got much less natural immunity. So ironically, they're at more risk now because they've had less infection in the past. So they do need to catch up with the extra vaccine doses there. So particularly older adults who received uh, the Sinovac primary schedules, they need a third dose. But if they have a third dose of the same Sinovac, that is, uh, that is going to be effective. But really, why the Chinese are still going for the zero COVID policy is a bit of a mystery to me. If you know, do let me do let me know. I, it seems like they've started on a particular trajectory and they, um, they don't want to change their minds. But of course, you have to change your mind when times change. The, the way my thinking has evolved has changed significantly. Now we're in the age of Omicron. So I was just talking to Wafafa today in Uganda. In, in the whole country of Uganda, there's only been about 10 cases or so for the day. And basically everything's back to normal. The Omicron seems to have vaccinated the entire country and the, the doctors are simply not seeing any sick people at all. In the whole country, there's about 10, 15 patients of a country of 40 million people because the natural immunity has done its job. When, whereas the vaccine levels for people doubly vaccinated, it's still only about 12%. But of course, it's too late now. There's no advantage in vaccinating now that the natural immunity is there and the disease is basically gone in Uganda. But China, they don't have that natural immunity. And of course, they've got a much older demographic, so they do depend on a, a vaccine catch-up programme. So there we go. And now I've got some data from the UK, but I th there's a lot of, of that. So I think we'll leave that for a separate video. Um, ju just to give you the highlight of that, though, just as a just to stimulate your appetite a bit. Um, England is one in sixteen people at the moment. Scotland, with high levels of protection, it's one in eleven people actually have the infection at the moment. Absolutely staggering levels of infection in the UK. But more on that uh, with a bit of breakdown from the Office for National Statistics. And if I remember, a mention of what the Office for National Statistics are not telling us as well as what they are telling us. But that's for the next one. Thanks for watching this one.